First weather graphic today, the hazardous weather graphic showing uh, just one area with a, an advisory out, and that's a wind chill advisory that's out until 9 a.m. Uh, Monday morning here for St. Lawrence Island and the Bering Strait Coast uh, for uh, wind chills to 50 degrees below zero with those continued north and northeast winds. And again, that's out tonight until 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. Otherwise, the remainder of the state, uh, watch warning and advisory free. So moving on to satellite imagery, you can see uh, a, f a lot of clouds here coming up from the south and then taking a turn to the east here following the jet in across the uh, Queen Charlotte Islands into the southern panhandle. Drier conditions up here to the north with some clearing, Kodiak Island and uh, areas of the uh, Gulf of Alaska today, especially back here over Bristol Bay down across the Alaska Peninsula, Eastern Aleutians. Band of uh, clouds shows you with a weak front uh, moving across the Pribilof Islands brought about a tenth of an inch of precipitation to St. Paul Island today in the form of rain and snow. And uh, that uh, also some clearing occurring here on either side of that band before it moved in and then when it does finally push off to the east there. Now extending back down toward across Atka Island, the main low center uh, drifting northward here and slowly weakening. Been here since Friday, uh, moving very slowly to the north, still spinning out there and then another disturbance here trying to develop down south of Shimia early. And you can see kind of moving up to the northeast. Otherwise, um, areas of clouds with some light snow over the southwest interior and also up over the Tanana Valley, mostly north of the Alaska Range across Fairbanks, picked up a half inch, maybe inch and a half of snow there with some areas of light snow on up toward the Brooks Range area. And uh, you can see not a whole lot out here to the west. Uh, next system developing here south of Kodiak Island. That's going to uh, develop and track east-northeast toward Prince of Wales Island tonight and then take a turn, or tomorrow, and then take a turn off to the uh, southeast after that. There it is right there today, beginning to develop there, but about 1,010 millibars developing along that frontal boundary, the warm front extending and bringing most of the precipitation into the Queen Charlotte Islands with lighter amounts up here to the north. Dry with some clearing here across southern Alaska. A lot of clouds on Cook Inlet, northern Cook Inlet especially, and uh, but some breaks, uh, Prince William Sound, mostly sunny skies, Kodiak Island, Bristol Bay, Alaska Peninsula area, and even the uh, central Aleutian seeing some clearing behind that front. Areas of snow with this trough here from the Seward Peninsula down across the Yukon Delta, Norton Sound area and uh, also areas of light snow, as I spoke of, uh, kind of persisting throughout the day, uh, north of the Alaska Range, across the upper Tana Valley, 40 mile country, the Yukon Flats, and extending all the way out to the central and eastern Arctic coast, the weak low there near the central Arctic coast. And then this low here continuing to weaken, uh, a lot less gradient, a lot less lines on the map with that than there has been. Higher pressure ridging in here again, brought some uh, sunshine to at ADAC today, but in a few scattered snow showers, out toward Jimmy and at two. And then that moisture flowing northward brought some snow into uh, St. Lawrence Island area, linking up with that trough over Norton Sound. For tonight, uh, kind of a weak trough here keeps it uh, cloudy and a little bit snowy, light snow, snow showers or flurries for the uh, southwest coast, Yukon Cusquam Delta area, St. Lawrence Island, Seward Peninsula, some of that extending in toward the central interior. And also uh, look for some fog and flurries for the central and eastern Arctic coast coast areas, but uh, dry, drying out, snow, light snow ending later tonight, throughout the night for the uh, interior areas, and mostly clear skies with increasing northerly winds, uh, Cook Inlet, uh, especially the channeled areas like uh, Passage Canal and uh, Resurrection Bay, gusty northwest winds tonight for Kodiak Island, could see gusts 35, 40 miles an hour there, and dry conditions in the Copper River Basin, the slow deepening here as it moves, takes an eastward track now, uh, just west of uh, Prince of Wales Island, so that's going to increase the wind, rain, and snow over the southern panhandle, and a lot less moisture to the north, starting to dry out a little bit now over the northern areas. And this front brings some wind and rain into the central Aleutians, pushing in toward um, Unamak Island, and then eventually Unalask Island late tonight, a break in between light winds, dry conditions for the uh, Pribilofs. That low really weakening now there just south of the Russian coast, and tomorrow off the picture, gone. 
Island. Uh, remnant trough here keeping some light snow showers going there over the uh, lower Yukon River up to the Seward Peninsula, maybe in towards Selawick and Kotzebue, but whatever falls will be quite light. Generally dry over the interior, maybe some low clouds, fog and flurries here over the Yukon Flats area, but mostly sunny tomorrow. Southern Alaska and Kodiak Island into the Copper River Basin and dry conditions for even the southwest interior with a few sun breaks still. And, uh, Clearing for the North Slope and maybe the Western Arctic Coast, this low tracks eastward here across uh, maybe Dixon entrance or just clipping the Southern Panhandle with some uh, moisture. But then those uh, rain and snow showers on the decrease, especially uh, to the north ending completely there with uh, maybe some clearing in the late afternoon from Juneau up toward Lynn Canal Glacier Bay, more likely though Yakutat. And then the next system bringing uh, another shot of wind and rain into the uh, Aleutians here back to the west and then for uh, Tuesday that low tracks northeastward here and brings snow and blowing snow with it uh, coming into the southwest coast late Monday night pushing eastward during the day on Tuesday and snow and blowing snow St. Lawrence Island especially the Seward Peninsula area Nome and then starting to push in toward uh, Kotzebue Sound there and then a break between that system and the next one that brings uh, more wind rain and snow into the western and then central Aleutians uh, during the day on Tuesday. Mostly sunny skies from the uh, Gulf of Alaska through the Copper River Basin up to much of the central and northeast interior back to the uh, western Arctic coast. Clear skies over the Panhandle, a little breezy here over the southern southeast coast. Northeast winds a little gusty through the channeled areas there. Clouds generally on the increased Kodiak Island, but staying dry. And this uh, kind of a narrow band, the front pretty weak down in this portion here, narrow band of precipitation with that. So that'll be ending quite quickly over the western Alaska Peninsula and eastern Aleutians looking for a pretty dry day for the day on Tuesday. And for the lows tonight, upper 20s, mid 30s for the Panhandle, 0 to 5 below in the Copper River Basin, 0 to 10, Cuscombe Valley, Teens, Bristol Bay, Teens uh, here for South Central Alaska. Highs tomorrow in the 20s, South Central Alaska, and really mostly inland areas, chillier for the Copper River Basin, and around uh, 38 for Kodiak Island, and lower 40s over the Panhandle. Lows colder. Upper teens, northern Panhandle, around 20 near Juneau, and uh, below zero in the Copper River Basin, and zero to 15 for South Central Alaska, and in the uh, teens for the Cuscombe Valley and Bristol Bay area, followed by highs in the 30s, Bristol Bay, Kodiak Island, and 20s, 20 to 25, South Central Alaska, lower teens for the uh, Copper River Basin, and upper 20s to uh, <clears throat> excuse me, upper 30s for the southeast coast. And lows tonight, mostly below zero for the central northern interior, maybe down around 35 below areas of the north slope. Highs tomorrow, staying well below zero north of the Brooks Range, but uh, 10 to 15 in the central interior, 22 for Nome, and lows uh, staying above zero. There are Fairbanks out toward Tanana, definitely Nome and Savunga, but well below zero up to the north there, followed by highs a little milder, upper teens to lower 20s for the central interior, lower 30s now, lower to mid 30s out toward the Bering Strait and Seward Peninsula. Southwest coast, lows in the 20s tonight, 30s for the Aleutians, highs tomorrow, upper 20s on the southwest coast, Lower 40 Central and Eastern Aleutian. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Monday morning, we've got IFR, Eastern Aleutians, actually, Unmak Island. On Alaska Island in the VFR zone, but uh, on out to the west, we've got IFR. Another band of IFR here, bearing straight, moving into the Seward Peninsula, right on down along the southwest coast. And a pretty good area of VFR in between those two zones, Alaska Peninsula, Kodiak Island, on up into uh, most of South Central Alaska, VFR, another narrow band there in the cross, uh, Southern Cuscombe Valley, up to the Yukon, and IFR, or VFR, up over the northern interior, North Slope, Arctic Coast, marginal. And for the southeast coast, uh, southern two-thirds or so in the IFR zone, marginal VFR along the eastern North Gulf Coast. In the afternoon, uh, pretty good improvement here, VFR coming southeastward there, at least to the central southeast coast, IFR hanging on to the southern areas, VFR southeast interior, Cook Inlet, Kenai Peninsula, Kodiak Island, Bristol Bay, and IFR moving eastward there into the mid Yukon River Valley or the lower Yukon River Valley on up into the Seward Peninsula, 
Brooks Range, part of the North Slope, looking good. VFR, marginal for the Arctic coast in areas. And next big area of IFR out here coming into the Bering Sea with the next uh, storm. And we'll see by Tuesday morning, that makes a pretty good jog to the northeast here, actually moving inland along the Yukon Delta. Uh, coast and inland a little bit there by Tuesday morning. Narrowing band here extending southward with a weakening front there across uh, Nikolsky. Uh, the interior here not too bad except for some IFR up over the uh, Yukon Flats area and to just west of Eagle there, but uh, actually in, possibly into the uh, Fairbanks area as well. But south and east of the Alaska Range, good VFR, and actually northwest of the range as well, across the mid Yukon River Valley, VFR. Western Arctic Coast, VFR. North Slope as well. Panhandle, all VFR for a change. And for the uh, afternoon, stays VFR. So, pretty good day here for the southeast coast as well as much of uh, the, actually the eastern interior areas. Uh, out here to the west, IFR kind of. Uh, <clears throat> Doesn't make too much more eastward progress here, but slides up through the Bering Strait into uh, Shishmaref there in the southeastern Chukchi Sea and extends back uh, to just north of the Pribilofs. VFR, southern Bering Sea, pick up some marginal here over the central Aleutians. IFR uh, pushing northward, but mostly to the south of the western Aleutians there, as well as Adak and Atkin. Some IFR here coming up toward the uh, Alaska Peninsula. Passes tomorrow, pretty good for the Brooks Range, VFR for both Adigan and Adam Tuvik. Lake Clark and Merrill VFR could be marginal VFR on both western entrances. And marginal VFR possible on the western entrance for rainy as well, otherwise marginal VFR. Windy north side, could see some lower conditions there, otherwise pretty good through the pass into the south. Isabel, optimistically go for a VFR day there. Mintasta VFR. And Tanita also looking good, VFR, Chil or Portage, VFR, Chilkoot and White also good flying VFR through those passes. Freezing level, uh, <clears throat> still a little north of the Primlofs, and again, really hasn't changed a whole lot here at the surface through northern Bristol Bay, north Gulf Coast, cutting across the northern Panhandle. 2,000 feet now down toward Dixon Entrance. And for icing, pretty nothing of significance here for the southeast coast, Gulf of Alaska, or all of mainland Alaska. Uh, best chance here would be with a couple of bands out here, well, especially this one with the uh, next uh, surge of moisture. Isolated moderate rime icing possible in this area, and uh, just some light rime icing with this weakening system sliding northeastward here across the Alaska Peninsula. And take a look at the jet stream. We've got uh, some ridging building here at this elevation, not too strong, but pushing the jet about 115 knots into the Bering Sea off to the southeast here across the Fox Islands and pretty light up over interior Alaska and the core of the jet here south of the forecast area cutting in across the Queen Charlotte's into British Columbia. And for 9,000 feet, uh, northwest 35 knots there across the Western Brooks Range, 50 knots here for the southwest interior into Kamishak Bay, or, or the, yeah, Kamishak Bay, Augustine Island, then south, northerly 60 knots there across the Western Gulf of Alaska, 80 knot winds. <clears throat> Coming into the uh, Aleutians there, head of that next system, even stronger winds, but that's staying to the south, at least through tomorrow, 50 knots here south of the Alaska Peninsula. Turbulence, moderate turbulence, central Aleutians, uh, most of the Panhandle, as well as the North Gulf Coast down to Fognac Island. <laughs> It's the rhythm of our everyday life. We're more dependent on satellite and communication systems than at any other time in history. Disruptions can affect our economy and even our safety. To prepare for the effects of such events and minimize impacts, we need to look outside our atmosphere, some 93 million miles away, at a star we call the sun. It's our main energy source. It warms the earth and grows our food. While the sun and the space between may seem pleasant from our perspective, it's anything but peaceful. At its surface exists a chaotic state of eruptions and radiation. And unlike Vegas, 
What happens at the sun doesn't stay at the sun. Space weather is essentially emissions from the sun, uh, radiation, magnetic field that erupts from the solar surface, pumped out into space, sometimes right towards the Earth. When it impacts the Earth, it impacts our technology. That's what we call space weather. These solar events and their effects at Earth can disrupt systems we take for granted. From causing blackouts to the power grid, to delaying offshore drilling operations due to inaccurate GPS data. Interference with communication systems can force air traffic to reroute and impact rescue response and coordination. Outside our atmosphere, solar radiation can harm astronauts and the systems they depend on. The good news is that these eruptions can be detected early. Forecasters at the NOAA Space Weather Prediction Center in Boulder, Colorado, have their eyes on the sun at all times. The Space Weather Prediction Center is part of the National Weather Service and is very much like a normal weather forecast office. We're here 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We're looking at data, we're looking at imagery, we're looking at model outputs. As conditions develop, we put out alerts, warnings, and watches of imminent activity to our customers so they can take action. In many ways, forecasting space weather is a lot like forecasting hurricanes. Those who rely on space weather forecasts, like electric power grid managers, are informed early on and can begin taking protective action. When we see an eruption on the sun, Space weather forecasters will issue a watch. This is much like a hurricane watch. When a hurricane sits offshore of Miami, for example, perhaps 48 hours out, we too can see way in advance that something may be coming towards the Earth. As the storm moves toward us, it hits a monitoring spacecraft orbiting a million miles away from Earth. It's kind of our, our buoy sitting out there offshore, and that hurricane about 30, 45 minutes before it makes landfall, we'll get the measurements from the buoy. That's what the spacecraft does for us. That big eruption that left the sun hits the spacecraft. Now we've got the measurements of exactly what's going to impact us here on Earth, and we issue the warnings to give the power grid a heads up that the storm is now imminent. An interesting element to this whole process is that when the forecasters issue the alert, the power grid receives the alert, takes the necessary actions to protect the grid, and the average citizen never knows anything ever happened. The number of customers who rely on space weather information continues to grow. As our reliance on technology increases, so will our need for constant monitoring of the sun. Space weather affects technologies. As conditions develop, we put out alerts, warnings, and watches to our customers so they can take action. GPS has changed society. Most people don't realize how remarkable and how many different applications there are. The GPS has become an integral part, not just of our daily lives as far as cell phones and guidance for our cars and mapping, but the whole uh, system in agriculture is really relying heavily on high accuracy GPS. So they're using GPS to plant those seeds with centimeter accuracy. And then they can come behind it and, and irrigate and fertilize right where that seed is with that one centimeter accuracy. 
the GPS creates a line for the operator that he can steer along, or you go to another level and the operator doesn't steer anymore and the tractor has an automatic steering system on it, much like a cruise control on a car, except for when I push the button, it doesn't drive a set speed. When I push a button, it stays on a predefined line. You don't even need lights. You can do it at nighttime. You program your GPS, and it's driving that tractor for you. So it's uh, it's huge, and it's changing the way that the farmers farm the fields. Six or seven days out. There's an interest in GPS applications from the space weather side because when the sun is eruptive, it causes GPS to falter, and in some cases, it doesn't work at all. Productivity may suffer to a certain degree in that there's no way that I, as a human being, can steer as good eight hours a day as a, a GPS system is going to do. It's going to be the same all day long. Some of the other application technologies, those are going to be gone. We're not going to have the ability to do good section control on sprayers and planters and fertilizer applicators without GPS. We see a huge growing customer base in so many different industries, so many different sectors now relying on GPS and high precision GPS. It's all big customers for us. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Coastal water forecast here for the south coast. North to northwest winds 15 to 25 knots for the day Monday. North winds 20 knots there on the north coast. Small craft advisories, Lincoln Canal Glacier Bay. North winds 25 knots. And for Stevens Passage, north winds 15 knots. And then southeast winds of 15 for Clarence Strait. For the day on Tuesday, gale warnings here for the central and south coast. North winds 35 knots, seas 15 to 18 feet. Uh, Clarence Strait, north winds at 20 knots. And then small craft advisories here for the central, northern, and inside waters for north winds at 30 knots with six foot seas. And for the uh, Prince William Sound area, uh, marine zone. Northwest winds 30 knots, sea 6 feet. Northwest 25 for the eastern North Gulf Coast. Western North Gulf Coast, northwest at 30 knots. And gale warnings, Kamishak Bay and the Barren Islands. Northwest winds there in those areas up to 40 knots. West 25, southern Cook Inlet. Light variable winds at 10 knots or less for northern Cook Inlet. And for Tuesday, Cook Inlet, northeast, 10 to 15 knots. And southeast, 15 for Kamishak Bay, Barren Islands, southwest at 20, west 20 for the western North Gulf Coast, east side here across Middleton Island, look for a northwest wind at 25 knots. And now uh, winds down to 15 knots from the north for Prince William Sound. Kodiak Island for Monday, west northwest winds at 30 knots. And for the Alaska Peninsula, south to southeast winds at 30 knots, Bristol Bay, southwest west at 20. For the day on Tuesday, gale warnings here for the Alaska Peninsula. South winds 35 to 40 knots, seas about 13 feet. South winds coming up to 30 knots for Bristol Bay, seas building to 8 feet. Kodiak Island, south to southwest winds 20 to 25 knots. Eastern Aleutians, gale warnings, south to southeast winds Monday, 30 to 35 knots. And storm warnings for the central Aleutians, southerly winds 40 to 50 knots, seas uh, 10 to 20 feet. And 45 knots south winds from Chitka Island. And then north, 25 knots from Kiska to Shimia. For the day on Tuesday, Kiska to Shimia, gale warnings, southeast winds 45 knots from Chitka Island, Adak and Atka, all looking at south winds 45 to 50 knots. Storm warnings for the eastern Aleutians, south winds 40 to 55 knots with seas 19 to 27 feet. And for the southwest coast, south of Nunavak Island, southwest winds at 20 knots for the day Monday, southwest 30 knots, or southeast 30 knots for the Pribilof Islands, southeast 25, St. Matthew Island, Yukon Delta Coast, southeast at 20, and St. Lawrence Island, Norton Sound, southwest winds 15 to 20 knots. 
for the day on Tuesday, gale warnings, Norton Sound, St. Lawrence Island, southeast winds 35 knots, and full gales here for the southwest coast, south 45 knots, seas to 13 feet, storm warnings for the Permaloffs on Tuesday, south winds 55 knots, seas approaching 30 feet, and St. Matthew Island, south winds at 40 knots with 18 foot seas. Up to the Arctic coast, uh, Let's see, central coast, good place to start. Northwest breeze at 10 knots. Northeast, 10 to 15 knot winds for the western Arctic coast. And from Cape Thompson to Wales, northeast at 15. East side, there, eastern Boulevard Sea coast, west winds, 15 knots. And then for the day on Tuesday, brisk wind advisories here, Kaktovik, Barter Island, actually demarcation point for west winds at 25 knots. Otherwise, for the central coast, swinging around to the east at 20 knots. And brisk wind advisories for the western Arctic coast Tuesday, east winds 25 knots. Gale warnings here for the Chuck CC from Wales to Cape Thompson, east winds at 40 knots. And for tonight, pretty light winds overall in interior Alaska. Uh, winds on the increase here with this front as it uh, pushes northeastward and uh also some areas of light snow diminishing over the central interior. Look for clearing and colder conditions here, southern Alaska. And that low tracking in to toward the southern panhandle tomorrow moves right into British, uh, British Columbia by the afternoon. And uh, chillier and sunnier conditions across southern Alaska. Not too bad over the northern interior as well. And some light snow showers with this system weakening front now. Perbaloffs down to the Alaska Peninsula. Increasing wind, rain and snow with this low that'll track, as you see, northeastward, right up uh, into the northwest Bering Sea. Snow and blowing snow all across uh, the northern Bering into the southwest interior to the uh, uh, Seward Peninsula. Mostly sunny, light winds, eastern interior and the panhandle. Next system bringing gale force winds into the western Aleutians, along with uh, some rain and a break in between those two systems coming in. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.